Let's continue trying not to get killed. Fork in the road. Well, not a good thing. Dead end. Oh, crystal clear sight at least. Dislodge these rocks. Let's go get something to eat. I'm starving. Um, a torch? Torch. Sounds like a relatively safe location. It probably isn't. No, I'm just putting stuff in there. Can I get a mouse? Oh, ouch. Uh, shouldn't have touched that. Let's add more bread. Or not. Let's put a pig in there. The big pigs. Come on. Come on, piggy. Want to put you in the acid. Won't work. Can I put the box in the acid? Yeah. What's jumping in and out? Oh, it's the bottle. Right. The bottle probably wasn't intended to go in there. Oh, let's put a knife in there. It broke the bottle. Come on, mouse. I want to put in you in there. Oh, and an apple. This is the best view I have ever made. Anything back here? There was a note. Let's read that. Stop this cooking about. 2nd of August, 1839. I have arrived at the village of Altstadt. It's a haven in the midst of a vast forest and the last stop before my final destination, Castle Brennenburg. It's late in the evening and the outrider, who has been with the coach since Bremen, advised me to wait until morning before I venture further. I've arranged for a bed at Der Müller, the village's only inn and am now waiting for the sun to rise. I try to sleep, but as I close my eyes, I see the men who fell victim in London. My fear and shame forces me to witness the same scenes over and over. They are dead because of me. Good job, Daniel. Okay, let's put the plate in there. What are you doing, Piggy? Me, Piggy. This pig, 
I must have believed that he could fly. Okay, let's get this bread. Put it in the soup. Come on, bread. Get in the soup. Excellent. Shouldn't you be in the soup, you piece of glass? Nice to watch it dissolve like that. And I've healed up again. Good. Wait. There is a barrel filled with acid. Right, and I saw that. And I forgot how to open doors. That also happens. Oh well. Over there. Yeah, I see you. We don't want your stuff. Go away. Sell your things to someone else. Seems it went away. How far away that I can't tell you. Oh, just over there. Okay. Still just the side, this crystal clear. And the past it without my torch. Don't punch. Oh, this is that door. Okay, sneaky sneak around. Sneaking around. Storage. Wait. Receptaculum. So lighting every single light isn't all that useful actually because Help me. the lights can be unlit by the monsters. Cell area free. Kitchen storage. I'm going this way, this, this wasn't the way I was... Hello! Are you okay? You don't look so good. Must have been playing with Josie again. Oh! Hey, anybody, help! I don't like what? these memories getting in my head. This. What? I mean, why? What did I do to deserve this? I mean, it can't be. Do I deserve this? It wasn't my fault. Why did he have to go in there? I don't go into burning houses. He should have known better. Okay, let's just sleep here. Or not. Probably not. There's a room over there. The door wide open. Let's close the 
door. <gasps> Bread. That's awesome. Also note. 3rd of August, 1839. I feel like I have fled the world and all its worries. Brennenberg is a majestic creation perched upon a forest-clad hill with towers reaching well above even the highest pine trees. Following the winding road leading to the gates gives the impression of discovering something forgotten, as if journeying with Marco Polo to the hidden Xanadu. Alexander, the Baron, is a peculiar but gracious man. He seems well-versed in worldly matters and is not at all as eccentric as I assumed. My room is exquisite, and I'm confident that no hotel for miles could even hope to match it. As the sun sets on Brennenberg, its fairy tale varnish turns to an eerie gloom. Alexander's strange servants are never far away. They are a quiet lot, and their behavior could only be described as skulking. Alexander seems pleased by my presence. As he puts it, it seems like I got here just in time. Just in time for what? Sure, if the boss had saw me, I'll have lit enough lights over there. It looks like no one's there. It seems to have moved on. Not for sure. There's not a whole lot to say about this corridor, but this kid goes back to the kitchen again. Is he safe? Well, it's for his own good. That goes to the storage. Oh right, I was at this fork earlier, wasn't I? I think I was. Probably us. Sooner we'll be ready. Let there be enough time. He escaped. Where is he now? We can August, eighteen thirty nine. The nightmares woke me in the early morning, and for a moment, I forgot where I was. Shortly after, there was a knock on my door. Alexander had heard my screams and asked me to join him in the parlor. As we drank our tea, Alexander began to tell me what he knew. It seems like the orb I found casts a long and dark shadow. It's not only a powerful item, but a dangerous one. Simply by touching it, you invoke the powers within, and if you are too weak to control it, it will devour you. The shadow is a sluggish thing, lagging behind the wielder, killing anyone or anything in its path to reclaim the orb. I said I didn't care about its powers and that I should throw it away. Alexander advised against this, as I'd still be a part of the path to the orb and eventually suffer death. Having the orb, I would at least have the chance to fight back when the time came. I asked Alexander what he meant when he said he could protect me. And he answered that things can be done, but at a price. 
What kind of things? Horrid? Monstrous things? Probably. Who, where, what, why? Damn it, monsters, I don't need you. Cholas creature. I have no use for you. What's this then? Can I put it on my head? I can put it on my head. Yes. No. Apparently not. It goes where I was hoping. Oil. Just as I run out of oil. And this is where I'll end the episode, so thanks for watching and see you next time.